This is Lesson 10 in our Calculus 3 series, Parametric Surfaces. In Lesson 9, we graphed curves in three-dimensional space by mapping the real line into three-dimensional space. So we took a t value and from it defined an x of t, y of t, z of t, a point in three-dimensional space. In this lesson, we're going to map two-dimensional space into three-dimensional space and get surfaces. So instead of just taking a t-value, now we're taking a pair, u, comma, v, and mapping that into three-dimensional space. So for each pair, u, comma, v, we're going to get a point in three-dimensional space, and that's going to define a surface. In lesson five, we saw a parabolic cylinder. We sketched the graph of z equals y squared. Now I want to consider this same surface in three-dimensional space in a different way. I want you to think about the xy plane being the uv plane. So what I want to do is I want to take this green two-dimensional plane and I want to map it into three-dimensional space, make it a surface. So I'm starting with the xy plane, which we're now thinking of as the uv plane. And we want to map each point in the UV plane onto a point on this parabolic cylinder. So how can we do that? Well, we're saying let X be U and let Y be V. So let X be U and Y be V. Then how am I going to define Z? Well, we know that Z must be equal to Y squared y is v, so z is equal to v squared. So now I have this mapping from the uv plane into three-dimensional space. For every point in this plane, we have a point in three-dimensional space now. And we have our parabolic cylinder. And let's take a look at u equals one, for example. Let's just take a constant u. What does that look like in the uv plane? u equals one, in the UV plane looks like this. And how does that get mapped onto the surface? Well, when U is equal to one, what do we have here? We have X is equal to one, we have Y equals V, and Z equals V squared. So at X equal one, we're getting this parabola, Y equals V, Z equals V squared. So that's this parabola. And what happens when v is constant? Let's say v is equal to 2. Then we're getting x is equal to u, y is equal to 2, z is equal to 4. v equals 2 looks like this. And now where is this line getting mapped? It's getting mapped to x equals u, y equals 2, z equals 4. So y must equal 2, z must equal 4, and that's going to be this line coming forward and back in the parabolic cylinder. Let's take a look at another example. Also from lesson five, we had our traditional cylinder defined by the equation x squared plus y squared equals one. Now this time, to show the mapping, I wanna think about the uv plane as the yz plane. Now what it looks like what I wanna do is take this uv plane and wrap it around, right? Wrap it around that cylinder. So how then, from a single variable u, can we get a circle in two-dimensional space? Well, we know that we're going to have to use sine u and cosine u. So if we let x equal sine u and y equal cosine u, we're gonna get that circle in two-dimensional space. With that, we need to extend in the z direction. So let z be v. And now we have a mapping from the uv plane into our cylinder. Now let's think about going backwards. What if we were given this parametrization? How could we find the Cartesian equation for the surface? 
Well, how can we eliminate the parameters that we have? We notice we have a sine u and a cosine u. When we're trying to eliminate parameters and we have a sine and a cosine of the same variable, we usually want to square those and add them together because we have our favorite trig identity, sine square u plus cosine square u is equal to one. So to eliminate the parameters, let's take x squared plus y squared, that is sine square u plus cosine square u. We know that that must equal one. So we've eliminated u. And we have this equation, x squared plus y squared equals one. Now having z equals v is saying z can take any value. And so that doesn't need to be said here. That's clear by looking at the equation, x squared plus y squared is equal to one. So that's how we get from our parametrized version of the surface to the Cartesian equation. Let's take a look at another example. Now we want to identify the surface by eliminating the parameters. So again, here I'm seeing a cosine v and a sine v. So when I look at this and I need to eliminate the parameters, the first thing I'm thinking is, well, let's do x squared plus y squared and see what it gets us. In fact, x squared plus y squared will get us u squared. Okay, so we have x squared plus y squared is equal to u squared and z is equal to u. Well, that means x squared plus y squared is equal to z squared. That's our cone. And we're given these restrictions, u going from zero to two, v going from zero to two pi. How does that affect the resulting surface? u going from zero to two tells us that the radius of our circle can be at most two, and that z is going to be at most two v going from 0 to 2 pi will give us the entire circle that we need. And that cone looks like this. Identify the surface by eliminating the parameters. We have x is equal to u, y is equal to v, and z is equal to u square minus v square. Well, if x is equal to u and y is equal to v, then this is just x square minus y square. That's our hyperbolic paraboloid. And that's all we needed to do for this problem. Let's take a look at another example. This parametrization gives us the sphere centered at the origin of radius two. Now I wanna examine exactly how we're getting this mapping onto the sphere, from this rectangle onto the sphere. So let's take a close look at this. When V is equal to zero, what do we get here? We get two cosine u times one. We get a zero here, and we get two sine u. Two cosine u, two sine u, that's gonna be a circle in the xz plane. Similarly, when v is equal to pi, we get negative two cosine u, zero, two sine u, that's the same circle, in the xz plane. So when v is equal to zero, corresponding to our region here, when v is equal to zero, we've got this red line here. How does that map? That maps into the circle of radius two in the xz plane. That maps into this circle in the xz plane, all the way around. Same thing when v is equal to pi. When v is equal to pi, we're up here with this yellow line that maps into the same circle. Okay, what else can we find out here? When u is equal to zero, when u is equal to zero, we're here. And when u is equal to zero, what do we get? We get two cosine v, two sine v, zero. 2 cosine v, 2 sine v, 0. And notice that v only goes from 0 to pi. So this is only giving us the front semicircle in the xy plane. Only the front semicircle we're getting. And similarly, when u is equal to pi, we get negative 2 cosine v, negative 2 sine v, 0. And for v going from 0 to pi, that gives us the back semicircle. So that's the back semicircle. 
Now let's see, how is this rectangular region here mapping onto this sphere? Let's turn this region on its side and see how we can fit this on. It seems like this blue line around the front, the semicircle around the front, that's here, okay. This pink line around the back, that's the semicircle around the back, so it looks like we're wrapping from here, we're wrapping it around. That's what it looks like so far. But how do we get both the yellow and the red line to be circles around? It seems as though at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, we're doing a twist. Think of this as a piece of ribbon. Pinch it in at u equals pi over 2 and u equals 3 pi over 2 and twist it. Then we're going to wrap it onto the sphere. And let's see exactly how it maps. Let's take a look at this point here, which is u equals 0, v equals 0. So on this rectangle, that's here. And on our twisted version, that point is here. When u is equal to 0 and v is equal to 0, what do we get here for x? We're going to get x is equal to 2, y is equal to 0, z is equal to 0. So we're getting this point here when u and v are equal to 0. So that means this corner is mapping here, which means we need to twist our ribbon here before we wrap it on. So now we have this point mapping here, and we understand exactly how this rectangular region in the UV plane gets mapped onto the sphere. I know it's confusing when you first see something like this, but I think it's worth going through trying to figure out where all the pieces of the rectangle actually map. Now, as a separate exercise, we could also look at these equations and eliminate the parameters and get the Cartesian equation for the sphere. So let's do that as well. We're starting with these equations. We want to eliminate the parameters. Well, again, I'm always looking to square out my sines and cosines so that I can use my favorite trig identity and get rid of them. I see a cosine v here and a sine v here with the same factor in front. So I want to take x squared plus y squared and see what that gives me. x squared plus y squared gives me 4 cosine squared u. Right, I factor out my 4 cosine squared, and I can cancel my cosine squared v plus sine squared v to be 1. So I've got 4 cosine squared u is equal to x squared plus y squared. Okay, how does that have anything to do with z? I have 4 cosine squared u here, and I have a 2 sine u here. If I square this and add it in, that'll cancel too. So I have x squared plus y squared plus z squared is the 4 cosine squared u, and then from z, 4 sine squared u, and so this simplifies to 4. So now we see that we have the equation for the sphere centered at the origin of radius 2. Okay, now let's take a look at how we can find a parametric representation for a surface. So we want to find the parametric representation for the portion of z equals x squared plus y squared that is below z equals 4. z equals x squared plus y squared is a basic paraboloid. Below z equals 4 means we're cutting it off here, right? And now, how can we get a parametric representation for what's going on here? Well, I see an x squared plus y squared. I know that any of my horizontal slices here are going to be circles. So how do we get that circular motion when we're using parametrized equations? We know we're going to have to use a sine and cosine. So I want to start out by having sine u and cosine u. But I also notice that my radius for these circles is not fixed. Right? The radius is growing as the height is growing. So I think that I need to put in a v here and a v here x squared plus y squared, let's eliminate the parameter here and see what we need for z. x squared plus y squared is going to be v squared sine squared u plus v squared cosine squared u. So that's going to be v squared times 1 or just v squared. And this needs to equal z because x squared plus y squared must equal z. So this must be z, z must be v squared. 
And now, because they said we want the portion of this paraboloid below z equals 4, we need to figure out what bounds we have on u and v. Like, what region in the two-dimensional uv plane do we need to map here? Well, to get the entire circle, we do need 0 to 2 pi on u. But now, what are the bounds on v? Well, we want z to go from 0 to 4. So that would mean v should go from 0 to 2. And this is a parametrization for this paraboloid. Let's try another. We want to find a parametric representation for the portion of the ellipsoid that is in front of the xz plane. And we're given 9x squared plus 36y squared plus 4z squared is equal to 36. So dividing out by 36 gives us this form of the equation which helps us to visualize the ellipsoid. We know that in the x-axis we'll go out to two units, in the y out to one, in the z out to three. And now how am I going to find a parametric representation for this? Well, I'm thinking that my ellipsoid is similar to the sphere. So I want to go back up and see what we were given for the sphere and see if I can modify that for what I need for this ellipsoid. So in the sphere problem, we were given the following parametrization x equals 2 cosine u cosine v, y equals 2 cosine u sine v, z equals 2 sine u. And that was the sphere of radius 2. So now I'm looking at the ellipse that I need, and I want, in the x direction, I want to go out to 2 units. So I'm going to keep a 2 there, 2 cosine u cosine v. But in the y, I only want to go out to 1 unit, so I'll have a 1 coefficient. And in z, I want to go up to 3. So I'm going to have a 3 sine u. And now let's think about the bounds that we need for u and v. For this, we really need to think about that wrapping or that mapping onto the sphere. If we want the front part of an ellipsoid, the part in front of the xz plane, that means I want this entire front and down here. So instead of starting my region for u at 0 and then having to break it up into two parts because I only want the front here, why don't I just say negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 for u. And for v, we still need 0 to pi. So u is going from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, and v is going from 0 to pi. And that's the portion of the ellipsoid we're looking for. And with that, we'll conclude our lesson on parametric surfaces.